ladies and gentlemen, is Friday the 22nd of August in the year 1851, where, in the presence of Her Majesty Queen Victoria, our broadcast will report on the very first international yacht race in history. The yacht America, flying the flag of the New York Yacht Club, will be taking on the best of British in a race around the Isle of Wight here on the south coast of England. The Royal Yacht Squadron is officiating, and to the winner goes this handsome trophy, worth 100 guineas and handcrafted by Garrett of London, the Queen's jeweller. Crewman Jeremy Belligand is one of a number of British who are sailing with the Americans today. Indeed I am, Mortimer. We're lined up in the shadow of Carl's Castle with all the other yachts in the fleet waiting for the five-minute gun. It's a magnificent sight. We can see the cutters in their separate group, 300 yards to the east. Commodore Stevens from the New York Yacht Club is one of the owners of the America, and he joins us now. Uh, Commodore, uh, do you really think you have any chance? Indeed we do, sir. Do you know that since we have arrived, we have offered a wager of £10,000, winner takes all, to any yacht that can beat us? And Mortimer, do you know how many challenges we've had? No. Not a single one, sir. So you'll be looking forward to the race, then? Well, we've put a lot of time and money into America, and we firmly believe she is the fastest yacht in the world. And this is our chance to prove it. Tell you, Mortimer, this is hard work. Uh-oh! We seem to be in trouble. Yes, indeed they are. America's hoisted her sails so fast they've caught the wind and she's overridden her anchor. You're right, Mortimer. The current and breeze have pivoted us around our anchor chain. Hey! The entire British fleet is now leaving America behind. We're hearing the wind is increasing from the southwest. Ideal conditions for America. You watch her go now, Mortimer. Indeed. See how America is catching the laggards. Valenti is ahead. Oh, but it's not over yet. There are signs that America is making gains on the fleet. The first nine boats are round the mark within three minutes. <laughs> this is a very tight race, the most thrilling ever. The breeze has freshened again. It's now over six knots. There's something happening. Very strange. America appears to be not following the course. Some of the British are following her. The race chart I have here clearly shows the fleet rounding the NAB light. America surely can't just ignore the rules. Our chart has no mention of the NAB. Mr. Underwood, our pilot, is quite within his rights to go inside the light. This is unheard of. They can't just ignore the rules. Mortimer, I have to disagree. I have here the same chart given to America. Look, it has the flags of each of the contestants, and there's no mention of the NAB lightship. There must have been two different notices issued. Incredible. Look how well America sails into the wind. She is far stronger on this point of sail than any of the British vessels. Bless my soul, America is now sailing against the wind and the tide and she's still extending her lead with every tack. She's not known as the mistress of the wind for nothing.
Look at her radical flying jib. What a yacht. What seamanship. Hello, what's this? We've just broken our jib boom. <laughs> Thankfully, it served its purpose. Our real concern now is the sudden drop in the breeze. The chasing fleet are closing fast. Valenti said her bowsprit taken out in a collision with Freak. That's half the fleet retired since the race started. A lot can happen yet. There's still some very strong British yachts out there. Aurora's only a mile behind America, and Arrow and Alarm are still there. Yes, the pride of British yachting now rests with those three yachts. sailing dangerously close to the Bond Church coastline. Not a wise tactic with the tide against them, wouldn't you say, Mortimer? Oh my. Oh my, that's Arrow. She's run aground off Ventnor, and, and Alarm is standing by to help, or so it appears. That only leaves three British yachts with any chance now, which I think Aurora is our biggest hope. It's 5.47 p.m. and America is at the Needles, with nobody else in sight. She's an amazing seven and a half miles ahead of Aurora, with nobody else remaining a threat. America lead, Your Majesty! There's the Royal Yacht, lads! Three cheers for Her Majesty! Amen! By Joe, who would have thought it? The America crew saluting the Sovereign. Oh, what a splendid gesture, Rick. There is no second man. We're close to the finishing cows now, Mortimer. We've lost sight of Aurora in the gloom. This really is a beautiful little yacht. Eight thirty-seven p.m. What an historic moment. The Hundred Guineas Cup is now the America's Cup. Unbelievable. What a splendid achievement for the Americans, and what a great day for international yachting. I have the feeling that this cup could open up a whole new era in the sport. But quite how that will happen, well, only time will tell.